So if Baron Zemo had to get a kidney transplant, you would want him to change his name to has to go to the bathroom more often? No. Superpowers are weird. Let's talk to Tom and Nina to answer this question. What are the most useless superpowers in the MCU? Nina, what are the most useless powers in the MCU? So uh, when you asked me to think about this question, I knew my answer immediately because I remember when I saw Guardians of the Galaxy 2 in theaters, I took one look at Mantis and was like, why? And uh, her superpower being like just a general vibe check does not seem super <laughs> useful to me. Um, I don't I don't know enough about kind of her comics incarnation to know if she has some other good power. But like I just did a rewatch of, uh, you know, Infinity War and Endgame. And like when she's just on Thanos's head camping out up there and is like, he's mad. It's like, yeah, we know he's mad, Mantis. That's not helpful. Like punch him or something. So, yeah, her like her energy reading thing is dumb. I don't like it. It's not a good superpower. Uh, but a fun that's my, character. That's my hot take. Let's She's a fun character and I like yeah. the actress. It's just yeah. like, give her something else to do other than like be a super psychiatrist or whatever she's out there doing. <laughs> I don't I don't see that being useful in any, I haven't seen it be useful yet and I don't foresee a way in which it will ever be useful. Well, James Gunn is going to prove you wrong in Guardians of the Galaxy. I hope he does. Again, I like the actress. I like the character. He got, he's got to do something weird and cool, which he's more than capable of doing. Have you seen Slither? I haven't, but I know I probably should. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> My pick for most useless superpower in the MCU is Claw. Okay. Played by Andy Serkis in mm -hmm. Avengers Age of Ultron and mm -hmm. in Black Panther. So his deal is that he has a prosthetic arm that can shoot concussive pulses. And that's pretty neat, I guess. His hand got cut off mm -hmm. by Ultron, and uh, then he got a robot arm, and it shoots sound. You know what might have been more useful? I don't know, like a gun. Like just a gun. Yeah. Like just carry like, a gun. Yeah. Right. Your arm, like your arm. <laughs> to use with into, your other arm, even. <laughs> right. You know, it's, it's like it turns it like it shoots sound waves, which I guess it's like, so it's cool to talk about. But at the yeah. end of the day, like, what about, like, I don't know, a ballistic missile? Or we figured out guns a while ago. And bullets. Doing the trick. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty effective. Yeah. And let's also talk about this. I've known about this character for many, many years. It doesn't make sense that his name is Claw, does not have a hand, but it is not a claw. <laughs> his name is Damn Claw. It. He should have so at what you're least saying is one that if claw. If somebody has a defining feature about them, they should have to like change their name. I'm saying that if you are going to go out of your if way, if you're going to name him Claw, he should have a claw. He should have a claw, or at least be claw-like in some way, like Doctor Claw from Inspector Gadget. That's he didn't exactly have what a I was claw, thinking of. Yeah, but that's okay. It's like he's he's evilish. He's like this is a problematic fine. worldview that you've got right here, Brian. He sucks. Claw sucks. He shows up in one movie. He's evil. He gets his arm cut off. He shows up in the next movie. He gets killed like a chump. Claw. He sucks. And his power so, sucks. Use a gun. So if Baron Zemo had to get a kidney transplant, you would want him to change his name to has to go to the bathroom more often? No. I'm just saying that a claw is a fairly menacing sounding name. A claw is a weapon. What does he fight with? He fights not with a, his claws. Not a claw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wolverine fights with claws. Claws are a thing. You know? And he and he has nothing to do with Wolverines. Nothing to do with Wolverine. Nothing to, to do define with claws. Himself as a character without turning to, uh, to narrative crutches, like naming yourself after the thing that's on your body. So you're pro <laughs> claw, is what you're saying. You like Ulysses Claw. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Can we go back? Can you reintroduce me instead of, you know, calling me Tom? Could you just call me skin tag he's trying to hide on camera right now? Oh, my God. <laughs> you need to pull your life together. You need to change your worldview. Okay, so skin tag you're trying to hide on camera. Please tell us. What are the most useless superpowers in the MCU? I'm canceling you. First of all, <laughs> Nina, I hate to disagree with you, but Mantis is equal you can talk to, and I'm on board with that. That's basically all I've been looking for my entire adult life. I don't Just think a, that Mantis is Just a sensitive is girl with, uh, with little ping pong balls on her head? 
Well, now that you put it that way, you know, maybe you've awakened something, but I'd rather <laughs> shift the topic. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I don't think that Mantis is useless. Who I do think is useless is everybody else in the MCU. Roast battle. Nobody's safe. <laughs> Ready? Starting out with Captain oh. America. You took human growth hormones from Germany and you threw a garbage can lit at some people? Uh, are you trying to be a superhero? Or my stepdad, Chet. Boom. <laughs> Iron Man. I just rewatched your first couple of movies. Uh, your power is that you pulled apart some electronics to make a bulletproof suit that you wouldn't let the government take away from you. Got bad news for you, man. You're not original. I live above a methadone clinic. You're a dime a dozen. Boom. <laughs> Uh, the Incredible Hulk, you got exposed to something that makes you get angry and weirdly muscular. It's not gamma radiation. It's called the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> uh, Black Widow, you look like Scarlett Johansson. I've had a crush on you since I went to see Lost in Translation with my stepdad, Chip. <laughs> what are you, my stepdad, Chip? And finally, Hawkeye. Hawkeye. I appreciate that you found something that was important to you and you learned how to excel at it. I think that that's really important. Not to mention the fact that you did it while supporting a family of three children and a lovely wife. Two Good children. for you, man. Two children. You remind me of my stepdad, Chip. What? <laughs> it's two children. <laughs> Didn't they have a third kid? I thought that I was the whole so. thing. They were going to be a number in Age of Ultron. I hate to pull rank on you, man, but I think that you were. So I thought they had two the kids. Of- oh, was there an, another kid on the way? There was the third kid on the way, and I think that they had oh. to name it after, uh, after Aaron Taylor Johnson because they felt bad. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, sorry. Sorry, I screwed up. So let me tell you briefly about Porcupine Future Telling Lady. Wait, is this a real thing? Yes. This is a real thing. This is from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, again. Porcupine fortune telling lady in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now it makes sense. Okay. So yeah, that, that in Agents out. of S.H.I.E.L.D., in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there's this great character played by Ruth Nega, and she's great. Oh, love Ruth Nega. Her, her name is Raina, and she mm-hmm. is, I believe she's known as like the woman in the, the flower dress or something like that. And okay. she's yeah. very manipulative and creepy, and oh, she's after, that's right. she's doing bad her. guy things. And the whole thing, and that sets up the Inhumans arc where they're going to go through Terragenesis and she wants to go through Terragenesis so she can get her Inhuman powers and be super powerful and be super bad. And so she does and she gets porcupine quills all over her and uh, she's really as, upset about as it. As happens, yeah. Yeah, she's not into it at all. That's she's like, also fair. this stinks. That's what she says. Direct quote. This stinks. But eventually she learns she can also tell the future. So that happens. In humans. But there's no there's no porcupine bite involved in this. No, it's purely it's terogenesis. So she's wasting she potential. Terogenesis, ter, mm. terogen mists, uh, and she comes out looking like a, uh, a like a porcupine. Fish. Yeah. How do we feel about the inhumans? Like as a as a basis for somebody getting superpowers. I, I, I recognize that like on paper, there's nothing that makes it more or less ridiculous than being a mutant, but for some reason, I just never got on board with it. Yeah. I don't know. I think the Inhumans have potential. I think that there's fun to be had in the Inhumans. Um, but at the end of the day, I've, it's, I've been kind of hot and cold with them. I think that there's a lot of interesting things that you could do with the Inhumans, but it's not, not my jam, as it were. Well, I mean, to bring it back to what you said at the beginning, or um, actually in a different episode, because time is a flat circle, like, you know, I'm sure nobody thought Guardians of the Galaxy would ever be popular, because it's a really weird... So I think with the right director and the right cast, almost anything in Marvel, with some exceptions, could be could work on screen, um, but you just, like, you need the, the next kind of James Gunn type to really, like, make it into something good. So I think the Inhumans just needs like a really crack director and cast if it's going to Can happen. we talk can we talk a bit about the Inhumans and some of their useless powers? Could we? Black Tom, bolts. do you have feelings? <laughs> How do you feel? How do I feel about about Black Bolt? Yeah. Like in general, man, I I, I got to say I don't know, it's 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 just it's one of those subjective things where um, it's the same thing with magic in comics. Like I I have the same problem with magic. 
Like Doctor Strange, I could never get into Doctor Strange because the fact yeah. that he used magic always felt like a cheat code. It was always like, well, he can just, you know, magic harder and then he'll get yeah. out of the situation that he's in. But at the same time, everybody in Marvel, everybody in comic books, they're all magic. It's just different. They, they just put different labels on Iron Man is yeah. technology magic and Spider-Man is sticky people magic. And everybody, <laughs> everybody's a different kind of magic. Uh, but for some reason, it just doesn't click with me. And, that, and that's that's the thing with Inhumans. I mean, if there had been, I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just like I never got into them when I was a kid. But like Black Bolt, not any different than like an X-Man. Like there could be an X-Man who can't talk or he'll explode a thing. I like Black Bolt. I like looking at him, right? I think sure. he's got a cool character design. But yeah. Black Bolt's power is that every sound he makes is like super duper strong, super duper loud, so loud that it will disintegrate matter in front of him. And so he doesn't talk. As a character, it's kind of hard to connect when not only can they not say anything, they can't really even do anything. Right. So he just kind of stands around a lot and like gestures at people vaguely in the <sighs> comics. See, I don't know. I feel like that could be like cinematically, that could be really fascinating. Like, it could be movie, interesting like, uh, if done. Like with. Doug yeah. Jones made that movie Mute. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, okay. or really any time, if you just if you get a good actor behind it, then it kind of rocks to have somebody yes. that can't talk and like it forces the the audience to treat that character as a mirror. I think that could be fantastic. One hundred percent. What they did was they had like a cranky guy in the uh, when they made the uh, the, the the Inhuman show IMAX ABC. <laughs> yeah, the TV right, show. But, okay, it but, was just a guy who looked kind of vaguely perturbed to have to be doing the show most of the time. But but, and that, but that doesn't do anything. I agree with everything you're saying, but the, his very power is so powerful that he can't even use it. That's the and thing. I think that kind of rocks, man. Mm. I think that that's cool. I think it's uh, it's the same thing that makes it interesting when Superman like holds back when he's fighting a bad guy, you know? Yeah, but he the still fact flies. That he could explode everybody. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I'm right. saying he still flies. He still lifts cars. He still will throw a punch. He'll still do a, a laser vision or a cold breath. Black Bolt just doesn't do anything. I want to like Black Bolt, but it's, it's, he's engineered to not do things that you want to watch a superhero do, which is use their superpowers. Okay, so. let's take this from a different angle then. For the last, what, 13 years, we've been looking at Marvel characters who all have the exact same traits, namely they're overconfident and they talk too much. This could be a huge change in tone for the entire franchise to just have one character who shuts the hell up the whole time. I don't, I'm not <laughs> against that. You want a quieter, that, more introspective approach to the... I think yeah. that that could be the most progressive move that the MCU has ever made, is to introduce a white character who does not talk. <laughs> wow. That would be just sit, very different. Just sits yeah. on his throne, not talking. For the just, movie. just shuts up and... Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> All right. Thanks for joining us. Please hit like and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.